Mike. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 So, today we're going to do things a little bit different because I made an entire video on racial analysis. I watched it back and I just thought, oh my God, how boring. I would probably turn it off if it was me. So, we're starting again and instead we're going to make this an upbeat video about racial analysis and I'm going to teach you how you can do all of these ratios that you can see on screen here. Is true. So I really hope that you find this video useful. As always, please feel free to ask me any questions in the comments section. Join our Facebook group, which is study support for AAT students, where you can ask me again any questions or topics that you're finding difficult. Please consider subscribing because the best things in life are free. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So the first one we're going to have a look at is something called returned on capital employed and the way that we work that out is to take the profit from operations and divide that by the capital employed and multiply it by 100. So there's a couple of additional things that you need to know and that's how to work out this capital employed that's on the bottom. So capital employed is working capital plus non-current assets but within working capital you have current assets minus current liabilities. So again, you've got working capital, which is current assets, less current liabilities, plus non-current assets, and that's capital employed. Now, if you've got low returns, this could be because of a low profit margin or low asset turnover or a combination of both. Next, we have return on shareholders funds. So that's worked out as profit after tax. I'm going to make that underlined here over total equity times by 100%. So this is the return that's earned for ordinary shareholders and that's a profitability ratio. So let's move on to number three. So this is the one that you probably remember the most because it's quite easy to work out and that's gross profit percentage. And all you do is take gross profit, so i.e. sales minus cost of sales to get to gross profit and divide that by total revenue times by 100%. So this focuses on the trading account and a low margin might mean that either cost of sales is too high or sales prices are too low. So let's move on to number four. So this next calculation again is a profitability ratio and it's expenses over revenue as a percentage. So you want to take a specified expense, so it could be repairs, it could be rates, it could be anything really. And you're going to divide that by the total revenue times by 100. So again, this formula is looking at one individual expense in relation to revenue. So we'll move on to number five. So again, this is quite a simple one, one you might remember quite easy. So that's operating profit percentage. So all you do is you take profit from operations and divide by revenue times by 100. So with this one again, if you've got a low margin, it means that either costs are too high, sales price is too low, or you've got a combination of the both. Come on guys, we've got this, just a few more. So the next ratio is the current ratio and that is just current assets over current liabilities. This analyzes working capital and sees how far short-term liabilities are covered by assets. So let's move to the next one, the quick ratio or the acid test ratio. So this is just current assets less inventories over current liabilities. So that's very similar to that current ratio just were taking inventories off. So this is sometimes a much better test to see the solvency of a business. Next we've got working capital cycle. So that's just inventory days plus receivable days minus payable days. And that measures the length of time between paying cash for inventory and receiving the cash. Next we've got asset turnover. So there's two different formulas here. So we can have a revenue over non-current assets or revenue over total assets minus current liabilities. And this measures how fully a company is using its assets in a business. Next, we've got trade payables payment period. So this is just how long it's taking you to pay your payables. And all that is is trade payables divided by cost of sales times by 365 days. If this is a large number, it means we're taking our time to pay suppliers and that can actually harm us in the long term because businesses might not work with us if we pay late. Next, we've got trade receivables. So how fast we're recovering money from customers and that's just trade receivables over revenue times by 365 days. So if this is too long, it indicates we've got poor credit control. And if it's fast, it indicates we've got good paying customers or good controls in place. 
And then last but not least, we've got this inventory holding period. So how long we're holding inventory for? And that's just inventories over cost of sales times by 365 days. And if that's large, it means that we could have higher insurance costs, more space required for holding inventory and products that are potentially not selling. So we need to find a middle ground with that. We're just onto the very last bit now. So next we have our gearing ratios and the first one is gearing and that is just non-current liabilities divided by total equity plus non-current liabilities times 100. So this gives an indication of long-term liquidity and financial risk. So if this comes out quite high and the company is highly geared, then they usually have to meet large interest commitments and the company could also have issues raising further finance in future. Next we have interest cover and that's really simple, that's just profit from operations divided by finance costs, so interest costs in the year. So that just measures the available profit compared to the amount of interest in a company. Okay so let's go through some real life examples here. So we've got a statement of financial position on the left and a statement of profit and loss here. So if we do return on capital employed first and have a look at this formula, what that's doing is taking the profit from operations, as in the operating profit, of 3,600 and it's dividing that by capital employed. So your capital employed is your working capital, so your current assets, less current liabilities, plus non-current assets. So that's why it's going 10,000 minus 1,500 plus 19,000 at the bottom and just times in that by 100. So as you can see here, the return on shareholders funds is simply the profit after tax of 2,673 divided by total equity, which is the 16,500 and then times by 100. Next, we have the gross profit percentage, which is just gross profit divided by sales times by 100. Expenses over revenue. So I've just taken marketing, divided that by the sales value and then times by 100 in this case. Next we have operating profit percentage, which is just your operating profit of 3,600 divided by sales of 10,000 times 500. Current ratio, which is quite simply all your current assets divided by your current liabilities. The acid test ratio, so that is your current assets less inventory divided by your total current liabilities. Next we have inventory turnover, which is just cost of sales divided by inventory. Your inventory holding period is just your inventory divided by cost of sales times by 365 days. Your trade receivable collection period is just your trade receivables divided by revenue times by 365. So just the debts control count here, 3,000 divided by the 10,000 times 365. Trade creditors payment period, so that is your trade payables or your creditors control account divided by cost of sales times 365. Working capital, that's really simple. So that's just your inventory days plus your receivable days minus your payable days. And then we have asset turnover, so the two formulas. So the first one is revenue over non-current assets. So 10,000 divided by 19,000. And then we have the second one, which is revenue over total assets, less current liabilities. So we've got revenue of 10,000 divided by the 29,000 for total assets minus the 1,500 for current liabilities. Next we have gearing. So that again is non-current liabilities divided by total equity plus non-current liabilities. So you'll see there we've got the total long-term liabilities of 11,000 divided by the 11,000 plus the 16,500. And then we've got interest cover. So that is just your profit from operations divided by finance. So interest to 300. So I really hope that you found the video useful. Please do give it a thumbs up if you liked it because it actually helps with the YouTube algorithm. So that means that YouTube will promote the video out to other individuals who are also struggling. And um, consider subscribing as I've said before and I shall see you on the next video.